March 5th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 20 from the New Testament. Now one day as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple courts and proclaiming the gospel, the chief priest and the experts in the law with the elders came up and said to him, Tell us, by what authority are you doing these things, or who it is who gave you this authority? He answered them, I will also ask you a question, and you tell me. John's baptism, was it from heaven or from people? So they discussed it with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why did you not believe him? But if we say from people, all the people will stone us, because they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they replied that they did not know where it came from. Then Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by whose authority I do these things. Then he began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, leased it to tenant farmers, and went on a journey for a long time. When harvest time came, he sent a slave to the tenants so that they would give him his portion of the crop. However, the tenants beat his slave and sent him away empty-handed. So he sent another slave. They beat this one too, treated him outrageously, and sent him away empty-handed. So he sent still a third. They even wounded this one and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What should I do? I will send my one dear son. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they said to one another, This is the heir. Let's kill him so the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When the people heard this, they said, May this never happen. But Jesus looked straight at them and said, Then what is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and the one on whom it falls will be crushed. Then the experts in the law and the chief priest wanted to arrest him that very hour because they realized he had told this parable against them, but they were afraid of the people. Then they watched him carefully and sent spies who pretended to be sincere. They wanted to take advantage of what he might say so that they could deliver him up to the authority and jurisdiction of the governor. Thus they asked him, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach correctly and show no partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right for us to pay the tribute tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their deceit and said to them, Show me a Daenerys. Whose image and inscriptions are on it? They said Caesar's. So he said to them, Then give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Thus they were unable, in the presence of the people, to trap him with his own words, and stunned by his answer, they fell silent. Now some Sadducees, who contend there is no resurrection, came to him. They asked him, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, That man must marry the widow and father children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married a woman and died without children. The second and then the third married her, and in the same way all seven died, leaving no children. Finally, the woman died too. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For all seven had married her. So Jesus said to them, The people of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are regarded as worthy to share in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. In fact, they no longer die, because they are equal to angels and are sons of God, since they are sons of the resurrection. But even Moses revealed that the dead are raised in the passage about the bush, where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all live before him. Then some of the experts in the law answered, Teacher, you have spoken well, for they did not dare any longer to ask him anything. But he said to them, How is it that they say that the Christ is David's son? 
For David himself says in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. If David then calls him Lord, how can he be his son? As all the people were listening, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of the experts in the law. They like walking around in long robes, and they love elaborate greetings in the marketplaces and the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour a widow's property, and as a show make long prayers. They will receive a more severe punishment. God, as I listen to your son uh, school, the chief priest and the experts in the law, on what the law really means and who the coming Christ truly is right there in their midst. I think about how ineffectual they were because of their fear of man. It is though it paralyzed them to be able to do anything. They couldn't do what they wanted because they had fear and they couldn't do what was expected of them because they had fear. And this fear just bound them up locked him away yet your son brings freedom to us how absolutely amazing that that's what you want freedom from our sins freedom from the burdens we put on on ourselves freedom from this world i was reading this uh, interesting blog about fear of man over fear of god uh, talking about the proverbs 29 25 The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever puts his trust in the Lord shall be safe. And it goes on to talk about a Christian chameleon who changes their beliefs and their value systems based upon whatever situation they're in. I almost, well, I have a hard time when people call themselves Christians, uh, yet they flip-flop depending upon who is in front of them because of the fear of man over the fear of you. I'm not quite sure how we can follow you, but only choose moments to follow you and at other times choose to follow our fear. God, I just ask you today for understanding that we have nothing to fear of our fellow man. There's absolutely nothing that they can do to us that you can't reign over. There's absolutely nothing that they can do to us that you can't set right. And there's nothing that they can do to us that you can't offer something more amazing. There is nothing that they can do to us. Because the only thing that we should hold dear to us is our faith and relationship in you. And absolutely no one can take that away from us. Once we have that, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Gosh, that is just an amazing gift, God. In Psalms, it goes on to say, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. And today, today, God, I ask for hope. I ask for hope for everyone who's listening today. Hope in you that, that they understand just how big you are and powerful you are and sovereign you are. And how you are the one above anything and everything out there that controls this entire world. You are the one who makes things happen. (laughs) We don't. You are the one under who good circumstances come for all those who follow you. So today, God, let us hope in your mercy, your endless mercy and your amazing grace that we will come to understand what fearing you truly means. Completely different than fearing of man that gets us absolutely nowhere except turning us into a Christian chameleon. Today, God, I ask for steadfastness. I ask for the armor of you to just be so thick upon us that nothing, nothing can move us from the spot that we are in to glorify you. God, thank you so much. I love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.